Hello friends, today's video comes from a viewer's question. Johnny asks, which would I recommend for the iPad, Luminar Neo or Photometer? That's a great question, Johnny. Both editors have a ton of excellent features and are great choices in and of themselves. However, when it all comes down to it, one editor does stand out and hopefully that will be made clear at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's begin the comparison. Let's start off with price. Luminar Neo costs $5 a month and $30 a year. Photometer also costs $5 a month and $30 a year. An exact match. Don't you just love competition? Despite the equal pricing though, I'd still say that Photometer's value proposition is better. Why, you might ask? Well, first, Photometer includes all the platforms in its plan, desktop, iPad, and iPhone. Luminar only includes iPad and iPhone. As a bonus, Photometer also provides a perpetual license option, something Luminar does not. So that was pricing. Let's move on to the next category. Let's talk about unique editing features. While both Photometer and Luminar share many common features found in photo editors, for example, crop, curves, erase, etc., both also have unique features which distinguishes one from the other. Starting off with Luminar, Luminar's most impressive unique feature has to be its sky replacement tool. As far as I'm aware, it's the only photo editor on the iPad with sky replacement capability. And all in all, it's very well implemented. To use it, simply click on the sky of your choice, and boom, the sky is added in. No brushing, selections, or masking required. It even has an interface for adjusting the sky's position to your preference. The second unique feature of Luminar is its enhancement tools. If you find your landscapes looking just a bit dull, Luminar has a bunch of tools to help you deal with the problem. The first one is its Enhance AI tool. With just one slider, we'll be able to apply multiple corrections like contrast, color, tone, and detail to make any landscape look its best. Another example is its Structure tool. This tool is the best at enhancing detail and local contrast, perfect for scenes with rocks and skies to help bring out interesting textures that make a photo stand out. The third unique feature is its portrait retouching tools. Luminar has a tool called Skin, which helps to smooth and skin and remove blemishes automatically by moving just a slider. No need for tedious brushing or masking. It also has a body tool to help adjust a body's appearance automatically. Moving on to the unique features of Photometer, Photometer differentiates itself with an HSL adjustment tool to enhance individual colors, AI denoise for noise reduction, and the ability to convert an image for HDR displays. So those are some of the unique features of each app. Let's move on to raw editing performance. Let's start off with Photometer. When it comes to tone adjustments, Photometers are excellent, producing pleasing yet natural looking color, all while hitting the correct tones. The main strength of Photometer's adjustments, though, has to be its detail recovery. As you can see, it has no problems recovering detail in overly dark shadows or overly bright skies. This performance is consistent across all platforms. The editing result looks the same for both the iPad and the desktop. Moving on to Luminar Neo's editing performance, like Photometer, Luminar's adjustments are for the most part pleasing, its adjustments also affect the correct tones. Its shadows adjustments, for example, correctly hits just the underexposed areas while leaving midtones and brighter areas untouched. The same goes for its highlight slider. Unlike Photometer though, Luminar has a deficiency in its detail recovery capability. As you can see here, as I try to reduce the highlights to maximum and try to recover details in the sky, the color simply turns to gray and no extra detail is recovered. This is far worse performance than that of Photometer. Its ability to recover details in the shadows 
is also not great. A lot of black areas remain, even when moving the shadow slider to maximum. Just to be clear, this poor performance is exclusive to the mobile app of Luminar. No such problem exists on the desktop app. It can be deduced then that Skylum has used a different processing engine for its mobile app from the one used on its desktop, perhaps due to technical compromises required on the iOS platform. Whatever the reason, this issue has to be addressed as it severely limits the utility as a raw editor. The next category is masking tools. Other than raw editing, Photomator blows away Luminar in masking performance, taking portrait retouching as one use case. With Photomator, you can perform subject masking to brighten just the subject to make it really stand out, use the masking brush to target just the face to smoothen and remove blemishes, limit sharpening to just the eyes, or saturate just the lips. Luminar Neo, unfortunately, has no masking to speak of and is yet another thing that hampers editing quality on the mobile app. So there you have it, the pros and cons of Luminar Neo and Photomator. Which one do I think is the better iPad RAW editor? While both have their strengths and weaknesses, I would say Photomator is clearly the better RAW editor for two reasons. The first is better detail recovery. Detail recovery is one of the essential tasks of a RAW editor, and Photomator was able to perform this with flying colors. Luminar on the mobile app strangely could not. The second reason is masking. Photomator allows for sophisticated edits to be made via local adjustments, and you have no such luck with Luminar Neo. That being said, we have to remember that this is the first iteration of Luminar's mobile app and all in all, I think it is a solid release and only can get better for the future. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know whether you agree or disagree on my assessment. Which one did you think was better? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.